Alright folks, if you haven't subscribed yet, hit that little subscribe button and hit that like button. Share it with your friend so he can share it with another friend. It's your boy Pelican Bay Kennels, Hurst holding it down. And today we're talking about May Day, Toe Jam, Yellow, and a whole lot more. So tune in. Alright, I'm going to start off by saying, and I know this is going to ruffle a few feathers, but I never had a Eli Chinaman Frisco dog to make me sweat. I mean, do they do they do they even produce any of that hog hunt longer than 50 minutes? Take him out there in the woods, them boys chase him out after about 50 minutes. Okay, I seen somebody that said something about road work versus treadmill. Alright, and this is my key on it. Cause um just like and, and this is my opinion. You know, just like the, the, uh, one guy made a comment and he said that uh, road work can't compete with a treadmill. And it can't compete with a treadmill to an extent. If you're going to do your road work, you're going to work your 9 to 5 and you're coming home and you're going to, you're going to do your hour worth of road work to tr try to compare it to an hour worth of treadmill, it's not the same. You know what I'm saying? Only way the road work will outwork the treadmill is if you take that dog with you every single place you go on a bicycle throughout your city throughout the day, throughout the entire day. It don't have to be all day long, but you gotta take that dog with you every single place you go, to your homeboy's house, to the store, to the up the street, around the corner. You gotta take that dog with you, and the, and the reason is because he's gonna get times when he get, when y'all you, when riding fast, there's gonna be times when he's just jogging, there's gonna be times when he's just walking, you know, and it's gonna be building up. He's gonna be building up his wind at the same time. And it's something that you can't accomplish in an hour or two hour worth of road work. You can't duplicate what a treadmill is going to do. Next thing I want to say is, y'all boys stop chasing bloodlines again. Stop chasing bloodlines. You want to create your own blood, you got to make your dog famous. You know what I'm saying? That's just basically bottom line. You got to make your dog famous. And can you make your dog famous in 2021 without getting your ass locked up doing illegal shit? This ain't 1980s and 1990s where they can make their dogs famous and, and it wasn't no kind of, you know what I'm saying, repercussions behind it. It's 2021, you gotta make your dog famous. So, only way you can make your dog famous is legally. You know what I'm saying? Once you make your dog a name, then everybody gonna know and, and, and look for that particular blood, you know what I'm saying? For example, when Mayday was breeding back when he was dog of the year back in 96, I know a lot of y'all probably wasn't even born then, but, uh. Back in 96, when Mayday was dog of the year, did the guys, the guys back then didn't run around to breed with Mayday because he was off of uh, yellow or because he was off of this, do um, um, this dog or that dog. They went to breed with Mayday because of Mayday, because he was a great dog. He, because of his actions, they went to breed the Mayday. They didn't, you know what I'm saying? Now, people talking about more or less the, the background of a dog instead of the actions of that particular dog. You know, breed and, and look for the best dogs to date that you can find. Stop worrying about all that old school stuff. Look for the best dogs that you can find to date. And breed that and start your stuff off with that. You can't keep chasing them old bloods. You know what I'm saying? Because... A lot of that stuff is not off of what them old schoolers said it was. And if you go back and look at a lot of the old videos on YouTube and different things, you see what the old schoolers was lying about. Some of the main dogs that's in these pedigrees today. So stop worrying about getting all that old stuff and worry more about getting something that's in, the, the, you know what I'm saying, that's making, making noise today. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what it's about, what's making noise today. So you can have good dogs for the next 15 to 20 years. Alright, now let's talk a little Grand Champion Yellow Blood. To me, my opinion, you know I always say my opinion. My opinion, the best three males off of Grand Champion Yellow is Mayday, Big John, and Toe Jam. And for those who don't know, some say Toe Jam is not really off of Yellow because Toe Jam was born two years after Yellow died. And, you know, some say he's off Triple A. But that's just rumors in the air. So, so now that I said Mayday Yellow, 
and I mean uh, Mayday, Big John, and Toe Jam are the best three dogs off of yellow, in my opinion. I'm going to tell you why I say that. And I'm going to tell you why I'm going to put one, two, and three. All right, Mayday was the best performing dog out of the three. All right, Mayday was the best performer. Toe Jam never performed. He was just a breeder. Mayday, Mayday was the best performer. Mayday wasn't a good producer compared to the other two dogs, Big John and Toe Jam. Mayday produced a lot of great dogs, but the ratio of great dogs to the ratio of subpar dogs, subpar dogs is way over the great dogs from Mayday. A lot of the great dogs from Mayday came in the first breedings off of him, like them Payday, Monday, and Friday dogs and stuff like that. And out of them three dogs, Mayday, Big John and Toe Jam, I think Big John won the battle, and here's my reason. Mayday was a subpar breeder. Some of his dogs were good, a lot of them wasn't. Toe Jam was a phenomenal breeder. I think he was maybe a better breeder than three, but he didn't last long enough and his breeding wasn't dead to the right dogs. Uh, uh, somehow or another, they weren't given to the right dog man to get it out there. Somehow or another, there weren't enough dogs to compete with the other two dogs that I'm talking about. All right. And the reason why I say Big John is number one is because he been breeding since the Mayday era and there's still pure stuff out there now with Big John and those guys still got stuff off Big John and Big John dogs are still producing and, and that's the purest of the stuff that's coming off the yellow stuff right now today that's coming down off that Big John stuff. That's the, that's, the, that's the pure stuff floating around, whether you like it or not. It is what it is. So I, I put him at leading because he's still remaining, and that's still stuff that you can verify that's coming off of this stuff. You know what I'm saying? All that other stuff, that Mayday stuff, it, it's possible. It's, it's, it's a good chance that it's coming down off of it, but, you know, that paper peeling and all that stuff done got the game fucked up. So um, that Big John stuff is really leading the game in that yellow the Toe Jam, I think, was the better producer, but it's kind of hard to find some real good Toe Jam dogs right now. And and see what the difference between Toe Jam and the rest of them. Toe Jam was a model, his, his daddy was yellow and his mo mother was off yellow. So he was like a pure yellow dog. And that's the difference between him, Big John, and Mayday. They was bred to yellow and two other dogs like the um, the, the Bolio stuff and the yellow back into the Jocko and, and the Red Boy Jocko stuff. But with Toe Jam, he was bred yellow back into one of Yellow Daughters. So that made some real pure, pure yellow dogs. Now I done had dogs directly off that Mayday stuff, directly off the Toe Jam stuff, and directly off the Big John stuff. And I actually had an option to get a dog, get puppies directly off of yellow from Mr. Claude Puckett. But I was a little kind of, I was maybe about 18 around that time. And um, I really didn't know what was what. But he was selling them dogs for $300 directly off of yellow. You know, and I bought another dog. I'm not, I can't remember what the um, what that dog was coming off of. But it was one of them red boy Jocko dogs from back in the days. I just don't, I can't remember what the pedigree was or whatever. And, uh. That dog ended up not being too good of a dog or whatever, but I should have up got I should have got the yellow puppy that he was trying to sell me for two what two fifty or three hundred, and it was maybe about eight weeks old, buckskin black mass, and I remember him saying it was off yellow, but I really didn't know about the yellow dog then, you know. And out of the three dogs, Big John produced dogs that would hunt hogs for hours, phenomenal dogs. Toe Jam produced dogs that would lay down. And hog hunt for hours. Phenomenal dogs. Maybe they produce good dogs, but like I said, a lot of them was subpar. Some of them was good. A lot of them was good. A lot of them was great. But once they start, okay, the thing is, maybe they was a 50-50. He was that yellow, and he was the Hollisworth stuff. So it didn't take much to make his puppy scatter bread once they start breeding. It depends on what the female came into him was off of. All right, Big John and Toe Jam was more yellow based, more red boy Jocko based dogs. So that's the difference. So when May Mayday bred with a dog, if that dog wasn't 
a pure red white Jocko dog or a pure Bolio dog, then that dog was pretty much scatterbred. And then when that dog bred with another dog that wasn't pure, that made it even more scatterbred. So that's the difference, and that's why those dogs of the Mayday stuff aren't producing and aren't giving you the results that these dogs of the Big John stuff and the Toe Jam stuff did. Because they stayed to the program. They stayed to the yellow stuff, to the Red Boy Jocko stuff. And that's why Big John is running the game right now because that's the pure shit. It's pure. It's legit. Them boys ain't trying to hustle you. They got real good quality hunting hog dogs that's coming down off that Red Boy Jocko, Mr. Chavis, and, and, and that Tans Yellow stuff. All right, man, before I get up out of here, man, I just want to say everything that I talk about about the dogs is fiction. And like I say, I write books, you know what I'm saying? And I put this type of stuff in my books, my, make my characters and my fictional stories and stuff like that. So don't go out there doing nothing illegal. I don't condone that. If you got a pit bull, the best thing you can do is take care of it, take it to the vet, treat it good, warm it, have it looking pretty, and, and make that money off of it the legal and right way. Pelican Bay Kennels, you heard it first. I'm out.